So what truck setup is the best for moving water in Ontario, Canada? The Phase 9 DLC map. Is it the Dairy Special, which is a truck that the game basically shoves in your face by not even letting you start the firefighting contracts until you unlock this truck by completing its contract, which by the way is also called Looking for the Fire Monster. This truck even has a fire truck skin. The game sells this truck hard, but it's not the only way to move water. The Dairy Special is actually a very good truck in general, and it does have a unique fire tank add-on which is useful to some degree, but if you do water missions only using the Dairy Special, it's going to be very slow to get them done. There are other options, in fact the Zix 566A is probably much more useful in the whole water business. So here I want to take a look at all the options we have for transporting water. I did wonder if this video was even worth it since right now water missions only exist in Ontario and there's only a few of them. But I have a feeling that the water missions are very likely to show up again in future content so I pulled the trigger anyways since there's a high chance that the video might prove useful again in phase 10 and beyond. To start things off, there are 5 pieces of equipment you can use to transport water. 3 frame add-ons and 2 trailers. There's the standard fire tank. There's the special fire tank for the Zix 566A, which holds the same amount of water but is lighter and also mounts the weight at a lower point on the truck. There's also the special fire tank for the Dairy Special, which holds 400 liters more water plus 200 repair points, but it blocks the trailer hitch. And then there's the full trailer and the low saddle semi-trailer. I looked through the customization menu for every truck, seems like every single truck that can reasonably fit a fire tank did actually get one. However, I did find a couple of interesting things. First of all, there's no water tank for the Zig 605R. This is obviously a deliberate choice, since the 605R can equip the fuel tank, so structurally it'll definitely fit with no problem. However, I think we all understand why they did this. The King is already good at too many things. If it's not going to get nerfed, it certainly doesn't need more utility value. Although for Ontario specifically, it's probably not even a good truck anyways, since the road conditions in this region isn't remotely harsh enough to actually call for the 605R's capabilities, and other trucks can be much faster and more resilient. There's also no extended water tank for the Paystar Twin Steer. This is a slight shame because that would actually give a chance for the 5600 50, 50, TS to be useful, but it's not that much of a shame because it's still unlikely to be that good of an option for moving water because of its insane fuel consumption, which is what already renders it impractical for other use cases it has add-ons for. In terms of monsters you can use, the Azov 73210 is the most powerful truck in the game with access to the standard fire tank. It's also the most powerful truck in the game with access to the low saddle, which makes it the most powerful truck that can use the semi-trailer for water. More on that later. Now let's take a look at the different combinations of trucks, add-ons, and trailers we can use for water. Starting with the Phase 9 DLC trucks themselves, which are designed for this, the 566A is excellent. It's fast, it's nimble, and it has its own fire tank. Fire tank has the same capacity as the standard one at 1800 liters, but not only is it significantly lighter, it's also nowhere near as tall as the standard fire tank, which means it has a much lower center of mass, which has implications on stability. This allows the 566A to be super stable while running the tank even at high speeds. The 566A does have a low fuel capacity at 150 liters, which you can't increase using the roof rack in this case because it conflicts with the water tank. But even with so little fuel, the range is far from unacceptably short. The 566A is very fuel efficient as long as you keep it cruising at high speeds. The Dairy Special is the face of Ontario and the Phase 9 DLC, and it also has its own fire tank. This tank can hold an extra 400 liters of water compared to the standard and 566A tanks, and it can also hold 200 repair parts. The Dairy Special itself can also equip a roof rack and a spare wheel. In total, the Dairy Special can carry over three times the fuel as the 566A, plus plenty of spare parts and a spare wheel. So it definitely has more range, and it's also more resilient and independent in the field. But it's not fast and nimble like the 566A, in fact it's the exact opposite of that. 
It's extremely long and has rather poor steering, so you'll often need to do three-point turns to get around tight corners. The Dairy Special's fire tank add-on also blocks the trailer hitch. You can still use the full trailer by winching the trailer, and then load and unload water by transfusing the water through the fire tank, but this will make driving very inconvenient. The Dairy Special is cumbersome to begin with, let alone with a trailer, and let alone with a trailer that's not even attached. The 566A stands out by being in the opposite situation. Not only can it attach the trailer, but it's still very fast, compact, and nimble, even with the fire tank plus a trailer. You can also move water using base game trucks. I recommend the Tega or Voron AE. Both are fast, both have always on diff lock. The Tega is more stable and has better steering, whereas the Voron AE is faster due to being lighter. Of course, you can also just use the A7, which is slow, but it puts every aspect of the job into easy mode. You get abundant power, abundant grip, and abundant fuel. It's also ridiculously stable that it's basically unaffected by the standard fire tank's negative effect on stability, even when it's fully loaded. It's also extremely agile for its size, despite being the length of a transit bus. And by the way, it also looks like a transit bus. If you've always thought that this truck looks like something you'd recognize, but you can't quite put your finger on it, it's a transit bus. In order to move more than 2200 liters of water at once, you're gonna need to use trailers. Between the two trailers, you can choose to use either and your carrying capacity will be basically the same in practice because of how the numbers line up between the fire tanks, the full trailer, and the semi-trailer. The semi-trailer carries 3700 liters, the full trailer carries 2000 liters, but it also allows you to use the fire tank frame add-on to carry another 1800 liters bring the total up to 3,800 liters, which is actually slightly more than the semi, but basically the same. In terms of mass, they're also quite similar. The semi-trailer is actually slightly less efficient in terms of mass per unit of water capacity. It's over twice as heavy as the full trailer, with under twice the water capacity. But in either case, this is not going to have much effect, since either trailer will account for a much smaller portion of the setup's total weight than the truck you tow them with. So it comes down to which setup is easier to drive with, which will depend a lot on personal preference. In general, the full trailer will be much more resilient off-road. It can be detached and winched around if that becomes necessary. It's also more stable since it's not as tall. And if you use the 566A, this will be true for the other half of your water as well. Less so if you use other trucks. If you want to move more water at once than that, you're going to need to use a three-part road train. So one truck plus two trailers, or two trucks plus one trailer. Again, capacity doesn't really change across different combinations, so the second option is the clear winner. You want to work with more trucks and less trailers as usual. Not only are trailers unable to move around on their own, but they also can't be instantly recovered like trucks. You have to drag them back to a trailer store if you want to sell them, and in hard mode you cannot sell them at all. This here is probably one of, if not the best combo. The Dairy Special has the most powerful engine in the game, and because of its large wheels, it also has excellent top speed for something that uses the special gearboxes. You can even raise this top speed further by sacrificing your high gear and multiple low gears for the multi-purpose gearbox. But most importantly, the Dairy Special is actually able to cruise pretty close to its top speed, even while winching a truck and a trailer behind it, which is something that most lighter and faster trucks cannot do, even if the winched truck has its engine switched on. A lot of you might already know from experience that if you drive a truck while winching another truck behind it, the whole convoy overall moves noticeably slower than if both trucks were being driven, even though in both cases the same amount of total power is being used to move the same amount of total mass. You can minimize this inefficiency by having the leading truck be as powerful as possible and the winched truck be as light as possible, even if it's not powerful, since the winched truck usually won't contribute much momentum even if you turn on its engine. And that's exactly what I have here. The Dairy Special is as powerful as powerful gets, and the 566A plus a full trailer is the lightest thing I can put behind it. You can also do this with base game trucks. Here I have the A7 hooked up to a Voron AE, same principle. The A7 is powerful and the Voron AE is light. If you want to move even more water at once, you're going to need to do a four-part road train with two trucks and two trailers. If you're going to do this, the first thing you should know is that the full trailer doesn't have winch points in the back. So unless you're willing to tolerate super awkward driving, you pretty much have to use the semi-trailer in the leading setup. 
At the same time, if you still want to have a decent cruise speed with a four-part road train, you want the leading truck to be powerful, for the reasons discussed earlier. And there really aren't that many options for powerful trucks with access to the low saddle. The A7 has been a reoccurring theme in this video, and it's actually particularly valuable here because the Dairy Special, as well as most trucks in this weight class, cannot use the low saddle. You can also get away with using a smaller truck, in which case your cruise speed will range from barely faster to much slower depending on the terrain. You will also burn much more fuel due to the medium truck gearboxes being significantly less efficient than the Special gearboxes. That's it guys, if you don't mind please leave a like on the video and comment Azov is bus in the comments if you, if you don't have anything else to say. Engaging with the video in any way beyond just watching it helps it get found by others. If you do have something to say, put it in there. The channel is still small so I do read those. Thanks for watching.